A lot of times pit bulls have owners who are irresponsible. They're wanting a dog who will look tough and aggressive. And you can see they, a lot of times they're wearing heavy chains and people just want you to be intimidated by their dog and they're not socializing them. It's a good girl. There's three breeds that are the top three bite complaint dogs. Yes. German Shepherd is number one. Chow Chow is number two. And number three is Retriever. One thing people don't realize is that German Shepherds are bred to be attack dogs, but pit bulls are people pleasers. I require my dogs to listen to me, so that's really important. Uh, so training them, usually I use a sound. Um, I love to watch Caesar Milan, and he always has lots of good tips. <laughs> if you're doing a travel show you got to make sure you bring a hat because you're gonna have plenty of bad hair days like today but because I travel a fair bit I don't think it's fair <clears throat> to keep an animal unless you have a large family who will look after that animal when you're traveling well, recently I received an email from a Levi in Nuri Upta Ta Nuri Upta wherever it's in it's in southern Australia and he wanted to know if we could feature show down there along with his unique dog, the Kelpie. Well, of course, I don't know when or if that's going to happen. However, I do want to make note of the fact that on our next clip, there is a Kelpie. It's owned by Greg Friel. And I'll explain why he has that dog and how it differs from his other dogs. OK, stop. Buddy, stop. You know, if, if you've got a, a harder personality, you, you can't take a timid type dog. Because mm -hmm. then, you know, the dog will, you know, out of no fault of your own, just out of your own natural personality, the dog will tend to be a, a little fearful. Get behind. The, the breed's established in Scotland, so it's a temperate climate. So these dogs are, are bred with a smaller cooling system. Crumble, inside. This is a Kelpie. Uh, Tomo, I brought him in from Australia. He was about eight, nine months old when he came in. He's uh, he got a real good temperament, real good personality. Kids can just roll all over him, and, and he doesn't doesn't mind at all. But he's uh, he's got a lot of bite. He'll he'll go after the he'll head and heel, but. He'll, he'll sink his teeth into the nose on, on those animals if they start to run off. She'll let my granddaughter play with her, but she can't hug on them and crawl all over them like these other, like a lot of the other dogs. Her, her personality won't let that. These, these dogs need so much exercise and, and so much running to, to settle down that um, if they weren't working steady, she'd be even worse around kids. So you think if it was like, it, it would be terrible as a house pet? Yeah, they, they, they just get too much energy pent up and they're, they're, people tell me, gee, you know, you got a lot of dogs. Like, yeah, but if, if I didn't do what I did for a living, I probably wouldn't have any. And I wouldn't own any horses either. Personally, myself, I just kind of set up from when they're younger that, that, that you're the alpha dog in the, in the tribe and that, you know, what you say goes. Reprimand them the way their mother would. And you know what she'll do, she'll get up on top of them and, and growl at them. And, and you know how they'll just lay immobile. Mm -hmm. And he'll just, the way, when he gets this look, it's like, okay, you know, I won't do it again, I won't do it again.
it took me about two hours to come up with a segue for my next interview. And the best I could do was something about the East Coast and traffic and high school and blah, blah, blah. So anyways, let me just tell you. My next interview is with Paulo Dioro. He looks sort of like a pirate. He's from California. And I think I woke him up from a nap. And he has two dogs. My name is Paulo Dioro. Um, I have two dogs and one is a uh, red part chow. The other is a full grown white poodle. And they're about 13 years old. And uh, we're all new here to Maui, so they're kind of new here too. And uh, so they've been adapting and we've been adapting. For us, uh, it's like having Thelma and Louise. Uh, um, the chow is definitely uh, the one that killed people, was that Louise or Thelma? I don't remember. But they were raised together in Berkeley. And they used to play in the parks together. And then the, the gal that owned Moo, she passed away and we decided to adopt Moo. And animals are healers. And they've been healers to both of us. Both Nancy and I here have been through some rocks and socks. And without the dogs, I think it would be less of a, of a patina, less of a, a quality of life. The responsibility of owning a dog is really having another person in your life. You've got to be really open to their moods, their diet, their quirks, their presence. And it takes a lot of energy to really uh, commit to this. You have to really realize you're getting into something that will require a lot of time. They are mostly uh, uh, giving their energy to you, but a lot of the times they require their necessities. So we need to do take them thing places, and you need to uh, be aware that they need special diets. Especially here in the islands, we had to switch their diet. But the pleasures, when you outweigh everything, the pleasures are immense. And uh, I think a dog enhances life force. So that's our great dogs. I hope you get to share them uh, with us and feel the joy that they bring. And uh, it's been a privilege to own them. Uh, I think they own us. But anyway. <laughs>